Good afternoon from the garden and welcome to another harvest video. It's the 8th of September, it's Sunday and today I'll be harvesting for the coming days. Uh, I must say that September is just about the best month for fresh produce from the garden. It's right at the intersection of summer and fall crops. So there are so many things that we can be harvesting right now. Uh, there are still summer vegetables like tomatoes, but we're also already harvesting apples and pears from the trees. So um, time of great abundance and it's uh, an absolute pleasure to be cooking with what we're harvesting now. We filmed a harvest video in September two years ago, so it will be interesting for me to go back and see what we were harvesting then. I will link the video in the description box if you're interested to see that uh, too. And just like we did then, I'll also be writing up a post next Monday on our blog uh, about uh, what we were eating day by day with the produce that we harvested. And I will also every day be sharing our dinners on Instagram. So if you follow me there, you'll be able to see what we're making with the harvest. I must say that this year has been rather challenging in the garden, especially the month of July when we experienced some uh, extremely high temperatures, uh, temperature records, 40 degrees of Celsius, uh, coupled with uh, an extreme drought here. Um, so there were moments that I almost gave up on the garden, but it came bouncing right back and um, it's looking really good at the moment. So I'm, I'm very happy about that. The absolute star of the moment are tomatoes. We have never had such a great uh, tomato harvest as this year. Both tomatoes grown outside are doing well and tomatoes in the greenhouse, which we already filmed a video about. But here outside behind me, we have a trial bed with several uh, Phytophthora blight resistant varieties that we're testing this year. Uh, because of the dry weather, they have not been challenged that much, but we'll be later this month probably, we'll be filming a video about how they're performing uh, when it comes to disease resistance. But um, we're already, of course, harvesting from them. So this is where I'm going to start. We have both small fruited varieties like this one. This is actually not, an, uh, not a named variety because it was the seeds were given to me by someone who just picked them up uh, when on vacation. We have sun gold here as well as in the greenhouse. And like one of the most disease resistant ones is probably uh, mountain magic. This, this is a little larger one. And we have also large tomatoes like this one. Between the tomatoes here and those in the greenhouse, uh, this is the first year that we actually have more tomatoes that we can eat fresh. And that means that I'm uh, beginning to process some. So if you have any tips on that, that would be very welcome. Another summer vegetable that we're eating a lot of at the moment are uh, beans, green beans. We're growing two varieties this year. This one is a French variety called Aguillon. I'm probably butchering the pronunciation, but I'll put it in the description. And then a red potted one, which is called Swan. These are the green ones. You can see that the pots are quite long, especially compared to the red swan. Uh, which has a beautiful color, but unfortunately that disappears when uh, you cook them. The most challenged crop this year have probably been potatoes. This is our potato bed. You can't see the plants anymore. We harvested um, some of the earliest. That was Belle de Fontenay. Uh, we harvested first. And, but then in the other half of the bed, we planted Rat d'Ardèche. Uh, which is another culinary variety. And um, the uh, potatoes, after we planted them, because we planted as early as they were planted quite early, uh, they were hit by frost up to three times. And even though we covered them with fleece, they had uh, frost damage. Uh, so we sort of almost gave up on them. Then the dry July, when, uh, because the, um, oh, Calendula, calendula flowers have kind of taken over. My husband was not aware when, when I went away on holiday, he was not aware that there were actually potatoes in this bed and that they needed some water. He forgot about them. But 
Um, even so, we did get some harvest. We're still harvesting some and uh, they're exceptionally delicious. So this is the variety Rat d'Ardèche. Oh, this one is not... Uh, <laughs> um, this plant did not give us much harvest. They're quite small. There were some, uh, some better ones. But um, because we don't, we don't grow many uh, potatoes, we're definitely not trying to be self-sufficient in potatoes because then we would need much larger area devoted to them. Uh, so we only grow a special varieties that have an uh, exceptionally good taste. So this is harvest from about five plants. As you can see, it's not a lot. It could have been more, even though it's not a terribly productive variety, it could have been more had we cared for the plants better. Uh, we'll try uh, to be better at it next year. Even so, um, the tubers look good, no scap on them, so we would even be able to store them for some time, but since it's not a lot, we'll probably eat them within the next few weeks. And like I said, the taste of this variety is exceptional. It's, it's better than almost any other variety that I have tried. In the bed next to our potato bed, we have some more root crops, um, carrots and beetroot at this side. We always have problems with carrot fly. Uh, the thing that we tried this year was um, growing an, uh, a variety uh, flyaway which has some resistance and it usually performs best when grown to another variety that is not resistant. And then, uh, of course, the, the idea is that the uh, carrot fly would um, prey on the, on the non-resistant variety and leave this one alone. So it has worked uh, that the Carrots are not completely free from damage, but uh, they're definitely better than some other years. And another thing that I'm trying is to let some herbs self-sow in the bed, like coriander and dill, in, in order to hopefully confuse the pests. So let's have a look what we've got. Oh, this one looks... This is the flyaway and yeah, there is a little damage, but not much. Um, I don't need to harvest a lot of carrots at the moment. I'm only harvesting what we'll be eating in the next few days. And let's also have a look at some of the other variety. It's forked, but I don't really see much difference in the when it comes to uh, carrot fly damage, which is interesting because uh, most years I try to net them with fleas and I have not done that this year at all. And yet it does not seem to be the worst carrot year at all. Oh, he's here is a nice one. <laughs> the best carrot of the year so far. I won't be harvesting any of the beetroot at the moment um, because I prefer to save this for the for some cooler weather when I feel more like eating it and concentrate instead on the purely summer vegetables like zucchini. We have several plants, one in our poly Italian polyculture bed over there. Then we have a climbing variety for the first on the trellis for the first time this year. And we have sunstripe, a yellow stripe variety at the back of the garden. I'll have a look there whether there is something to harvest. And we also have one plant here. And there's a nice little crochet to pick. But I'll, I think there'll be more at the back of the garden. Over here we have some leafy vegetables, different varieties of lettuce and Belgian and divy. Um, I'm not picking that quite yet. That's also a vegetable that I like to save for a little cooler weather when I feel more like it. I will be picking some lettuce definitely. We've been harvesting these plants leaf by leaf so I've already picked lots from these. I picked a huge salad on Friday for our monthly street potluck but we like to eat like when, when possible we like to eat lettuce almost every day or some other kind of leafy salad and but I will, I will 
wait with harvesting that um, right before we go home so that it does not wilt. And then there's this bed. This is a brassica bed where the second crop is uh, cabbage and over here oriental radishes. So let's have a look. Oh yeah, that's a beauty. This is a variety beautifully pink purple also on the inside which is called um, K and Bravo and um, I've grown it before I like this variety so I'll be harvesting a few to eat maybe if, yeah if, if I wanted to ferment them I would harvest more but I'm not doing it right at the moment so I'll just pick a few to eat maybe with some hummus I'll cover the brassicas again and put the uh, bricks on the edges later but now I want to show you the vegetable that we're most excited about at the moment and it's at the back of the garden in the edible forest part of our plot. So let's head over there. Over here is um, the other variety, zucchini variety that I told you about. It's called Sunstripe, a really pretty one. Can you see the fruits? This one is almost too large for my liking, but about this is the size that I prefer my crochets. Okay, got distracted here a little bit, but let's head over to the vegetable that I promised to tell you about. Ta-da! Artichokes! One of our favorite vegetables and a very challenging one to grow because even though it's a perennial vegetable it's not completely hardy and most often it does not survive the winter here. A combination of cold and, uh, and wet is, uh, is usually fatal so I most often grow my artichokes as annuals. It's something that I read in the book of uh, in the books of Elliot Coleman who grows artichokes in the cool climate of Maine and he also grows them as annuals. You sow the artichokes in, uh, in the heated propagator to give them a little um, heat at the beginning and then when they germinate and are a little larger you move them into some cooler uh, place so that they kind of think that they've experienced the winter and then they start uh, uh, carrying fruiting, flowering actually, <laughs> later in the year. We have already eaten once. Obviously the, the harvest from these few plants is not huge, but it's so very welcome. Uh, and there's, uh, at the moment, there's only three of us because our daughter is studying in uh, Canada. So I'll be picking the three largest ones and we'll have them for dinner. Or yeah, that one really needs picking too. So maybe four. Aren't they beautiful? As I said at the beginning of the video, September is also a great time for fruit. And every year the harvest, the fruit harvest from our young food forest gets more and more abundant. Uh, we have several or many apple varieties. Here is one of my favorite dessert apples. It's called Pinova. And it's a tree that I grafted myself um, many years ago, many years ago, several years ago. Uh, but it has been moved when we moved gardens, so it only started fruiting last year. You can see there are not many fruits yet and I will be, they will be enjoyed even more because of their scarcity. It started raining outside, so we're moving this party into the greenhouse. There's plenty to pick here as well. Uh, we have all those tomato varieties here. We filmed a video about a, re a re kind of review of all the varieties we're growing this year and I will link to that below. But as you can see, the video was filmed I think about a month ago and they're still all looking quite healthy and very productive.
here are three of our favorites black cherry very sweet tomato asterina one that we're growing for the first time this year and a favorite of my daughter esther as you can hear in the video where my kids helped me review them and then behind here is um, berries no sorry brett's atomic grape which is my favorite from this year's trial and the most uh, uh, instagrammable tomato we're also growing some cucumbers in this part of the greenhouse however those plants have suffered much more in the heat of uh, july and august than the tomatoes have um, but even though they're really i don't know they, they look like they're dying yet they're still producing fruits this is i think picarino which is a really delicious snack cucumber and we'll be definitely growing that one again next year it just keeps on raining so we're going to head outside anyways and finish the video hopefully it will stop raining in the meantime there are several fruit harvests that we're excited for and one of them are the grapes here the pergola because we only planted them in the fall of 2017 so this is only the second growing season and as you can see they're already fruiting three out of the four varieties are already fruiting abundantly the one here is um, blue muscat 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 bleu and oh there's a wasp somewhere uh, as you can see i covered some of the bunches of grapes in uh, uh, paper bags in order to keep birds and wasps mainly away and that way i hope that we'll be able to prolong the harvest so they can stay on the vine longer and then we'll be able to pick them uh, within the next weeks maybe a month later but they're already quite sweet so i'm going to pick a few bunches grapes are one of the favorite fruits of my son so he'll be happy and there's more we also have three pear trees uh, close to the vegetable garden in a row and those two are all, all three of them started fruiting this year it's the fourth season and uh, especially exciting or especially beautiful is this one it's red williams maybe you can come closer to have a better look we already we're already growing williams elsewhere in the garden the green usual variety but this is a this is a red uh, version of this pear it's a well-known pear um, rightly popular in the states it's called bartlett but it's the same as williams and it's a very good one for preserving but like the red one is just so much be more beautiful the last thing i like to do is pick some flowers i'm not actually growing lots of them this year but the zinnias here are very productive and doing great they also appreciated the warm and dry summer so i will pick a little bunch for the dinner table so that's that's not even everything that i picked today as you can see we're almost drowning in produce I'm looking forward to cooking with this. Uh, there will definitely be some preserving too. And I'll keep you posted on Instagram or on my blog uh, later next week. I hope you enjoyed today's harvest video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you would make with this produce. I would definitely appreciate some inspiration, even though obviously I'll be making some family favorites. And I would also love to hear what your September harvests look like. Happy gardening!